You probably want an explanation, right? Okay, here it is. This movie was so bad that after desperately trying to form into words how disappointed, insulted, and drained as a lover of cinema, let alone these characters and this world that I felt after watching it, I eventually reached a point where I'd been writing a review for so long that I started to feel genuinely depressed and had to walk away from it in fear for my general well-being. And if you somehow managed to avoid all the reviews and press around this thing from the past few months and just wanted to know what I personally thought of Batman v Superman, there you go, it's absolutely awful. But I'm sure that there are still some that want me to go into more depth than that, and since I've given myself enough time to get more interested and distracted in other things in the world of movies by now that I can come back at this thing head on, and I think it's coming out on DVD pretty soon, it seems like a good time to delve into it. So, here we go, enjoy. Those that watched the recent episode of Sam's Views titled Superman Pants on Fire will know that I am of the belief that thus far the DC Cinematic Universe, previously only encapsulated by the Zack Snyder directed Superman reboot Man of Steel, has been ran by filmmakers that don't understand nor share a common fidelity for the characters that they're supposed to be adapting, and that the whole enterprise is instead being spearheaded by a mentality to rid itself of the camp often associated with these iconic heroes and favour an emphasis on the grim and gritty so that angst-ridden teenagers will come see their movies. Especially when it seemed the only reason Warner Brothers suddenly became interested in trying to kickstart a connected universe franchise for DC in the first place was because people started asking a few too many questions once Marvel's The Avengers scored big at the box office. And Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, which promises to justify the controversy surrounding the events of Man of Steel, and which seeks to move the DC Universe forward through introducing Batman as a main protagonist, sprinkling in moments for Wonder Woman, and maybe even hinting at others to come, would seem to prove my theory 100% correct. Dawn of Justice doesn't just rank among the most depressing all-time lows of the superhero genre, it might be the worst movie I reckon will be subjected to all year. A stupid and insulting yet jarringly pretentious disaster that is so fundamentally flawed and carelessly thought out in every single aspect, and that has so much riding on it I'm stunned it ever even managed to get the green light from Warner Brothers. I can already guarantee that, however many problems with the movie we managed to squeeze into this one video, there will most definitely still be tons I don't get around to mentioning because if I did, we'd be here all day. Now despite my feelings concerning its predecessor, I did firmly believe that it was entirely possible to make a good redeeming sequel out of basically making Dawn of Justice one big apology for Man of Steel and introducing Batman as an audience POV to essentially question this new Superman and from there introduce a story demanding that both protagonists become fully fleshed out and constructed for a new universe. Unfortunately, no one decided to do that. Not only do Batman and Superman feel like lazy afterthoughts in the movie that bears their own names, the script is an insulting joke, scenes don't make any sense, it's clearly been edited to the bone, the notion of character motivation seems like an alien concept within this world, and where other similarly flawed pictures have managed to tap into the camp classic realm through at least being enjoyably terrible, the film's ham-fisted insistence to be taken super seriously at all times leaves it feeling just tiresome, disappointing, and unamusing. It's incredibly obvious that no one wants to be here. Just like Snyder openly admitting in the past that he's not a fan of Superman, the film plays about exactly as messy and forced upon itself as you'd have expected from a studio reluctantly playing catch up with the rest of the bunch, whilst continuing to not show a lick of actual legitimate interest in any of its characters besides maybe Batman, and even then only because he's the most marketable. All the actors look bored, and the whole thing can't help but feel like some mean-spirited act of vandalism against properties that these filmmakers, deep down, have a resentment for. The immediate reference point would be The Amazing Spider-Man 2, though even that movie wasn't as dour and depressing as this pompous heap of shit, in that the film is also acting as a money-making franchise machine, seeking to map out Warner Brothers' plans for their upcoming sequels, and that the film's excuse for a story comes in the shape of a bunch of half-formed, unrelated plot threads and ideas lazily strung together. Oh, and that the film bases its conceit on these superficial throwbacks to comic book storylines for good measure, so that, even if the thing is really cynical and insulting when you get right down to it, fans still think they're being respected. 
except where in that film the frantic pace of something happening every three minutes or the goofy, unapologetic tone or spirit might at least have made it difficult to get bored, with this, Snyder seems to think he's crafting the freaking godfather of superhero movies here. And so the whole film is just these smug, self-important dialogues for two hours designed solely to give this illusion of importance, and then maybe the occasional nothing special action sequence, executed through this dull and murky aesthetic that displays a complete lack of self-awareness. For all the problems this film has, I can safely say that Dawn of Justice's biggest issue turns out to be the most blatant and obvious. The film is just incredibly boring. So much so, in fact, that after having now sat through two of his overlong, sleep-inducing and pretentious, yet simultaneously dumb and substance-lacking Superman movies, I'd argue it'd shape up better if Snyder just dropped all pretense that these films were even about anything, and just let them become the dumb action spectacles they clearly have more interest in being for the whole runtime. At least then they'd be honest. You remember how Man of Steel waffled on and on about all these philosophical sounding pseudo-spiritual ideas to then turn out to actually just be using it all as a smokescreen to make vapid viewers think that the mind-numbing overblown action that filled up the third act was anything but because it all supposedly had some kind of deep meaning behind it? Well, trade pseudo-spiritual nonsense for pseudo-political nonsense and you have by and large the same movie. We get one relatively promising opening of Bruce Wayne witnessing the battle from the end of the last movie, itself an acknowledgement of how focus and direction can vastly change the tone of a given action sequence, which might be the closest this thing ever gets to having any kind of point to make, followed by a reintroduction to Superman set in Africa giving way to plot points concerning Lois Lane investigating terrorists, Batman coming out of retirement to stop the supposed alien menace, Jesse Eisenberg's version of Lex Luthor getting his hands on kryptonite, him trying to corrupt the state senator, blowing up City Hall, which conveniently gets forgotten about 10 minutes later, and Superman having a crisis of conscience, and somehow amidst all of that the film manages to just devolve into this tedious gobbledygook of people paying constant lip service to important sounding ideas. And again, like Man of Steel, none of it means a thing or tells us anything about these characters. Two hours of people talking and you don't walk away knowing anything about Superman that you didn't already know by the end of its predecessor. And by the time the film finally delivers the big showdown, the thing lasts about five underwhelming minutes of two idiotic meatheads smashing each other about the place over a misunderstanding, and concludes in a plot point so moronic I wouldn't even expect it to crop up in the Joel Schumacher version of Batman v Superman. Oh, and there's also an ongoing thing with Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman trying to steal information from Lex Luthor concerning other metahumans from around the planet, so that really obvious Justice League setup is really obvious, but it doesn't really have anything to do with the rest of the movie other than to constantly remind people every 20 minutes that they're setting up a franchise here. And that's not even acknowledging the bizarre Flash cameo shoehorned in there. Ask someone to explain that to you sometime. Seriously, considering how desperate the sequel baiting gets at times, it's shocking how the best thing they could seemingly come up with was to just have Wonder Woman sit by a laptop to watch individual trailers for The Flash, Aquaman and Cyborg. Oh, and then she shows up for the big boss fight towards the end to help out, I guess. You remember how satisfying it was that, despite there being tons of technicalities needed to get them in the same room, the Avengers really wasn't afraid to just calm down and let the heroes interact and bounce off of one another? Well, if you were hoping Superman and Batman might actually say anything to each other outside of their broad and macho, I'm gonna totes f you up mate, three lines of threat from the trailers, you might be the most disappointed of all. And Snyder has done such a piss poor job of realising this particular version of Superman, that pinning him up against the Dark Knight means absolutely nothing within this context. No contrasting worldviews, no light and dark, no ideologies being challenged, not a goddamn thing. Just two darkly dressed mopey hypocrites staring each other out, and criticising the other for doing the exact same thing that they're already doing. Superman doesn't like Batman because he's exacting his own brand of vigilante justice, Batman doesn't like Superman because he's exacting his own brand of vigilante justice. You'd think that since the movie is clearly more concerned with visual panache than its characters, the idea might be to at least provide that contrast through viewing the tonally opposite cities that both heroes inhabit, but since Snyder seems to hate establishing shots, we never once get a sense of distinct personality from either Metropolis or Gotham. You know, it helps to expand a cinematic world if the audience gets to see it, Zack. So, Lex Luthor captures Superman's mum in order to force him to fight Batman, and then after, like, two attempts to reason with the Dark Knight, he decides there's no hope and he should just fight the guy anyway. But not to worry, when Superman's last resort to reason with Batman during their pointless fight comes in the form of mentioning the name Martha, 
and then Lois Lane shows up magically to inform Batman that it's Superman's mother's name, Batman no joke decides to stand down and befriend him in the time span of a minute, because I kid you not, his mum was named Martha too. Yes, that's right, the big, whoa you mean we're on the same side, revelation, comes in the form of Batman realising that his and Superman's mummy shared the same name. That is actually something that happens in a real movie commissioned by a major studio, and we're actually supposed to take it seriously. You're probably going to hear that Ben Affleck is the best thing about this movie, and while I'm sure he has the potential to be a good Batman, and I think that Cavill really has it in him to be a great Superman as well, neither were given anything to work with, and the film never even provides the most basic context for why their characters say, think, or do the things that they do. I totally could be made to be on board with the version of Batman that kills, if there's a reason as to why he does it. But because the script isn't interested in exploring him as a character, it just comes across like they really thought that was the only way to outgritty the Christian Bale incarnation. Similarly, if you want to introduce all these newer contradictory characteristics to the more traditional version of Superman, you have to explain to us why he feels that way, and where it all originates from a character context. You have to let us get in his head somehow. And this slavish loyalty the film has to doing all it can to visually remind people about the Dark Knight Returns comic book storyline, in which Batman is a bigger, fatter, retired 55 year old, which he is not in this story, means that Affleck is crammed into this awkward costume lacking a neck piece, desperately trying to make him look fat and stumpy, yet still jacked as all hell. It's a bizarre design choice in which the actor looks incredibly uncomfortable, and it's only at the service of pandering to Frank Miller fanboys. If there are any upsides to be mentioned, I will say that as awfully written as he is, I did admittedly mildly enjoy having Jesse Eisenberg around as Lex Luthor, if only because he's the one guy in the entire film with any kind of raw charisma. Say what you will about him having no motivation to speak of, when you stick him in a cast full of lifeless downbeat gits like this, it's kind of impossible not to latch onto him like he's the last glimmer of optimism or humour in this bleak ass version of a DC cinematic universe. And while I found the action surprisingly underwhelming at times, and a Batmobile car chase in particular is incredibly poorly executed, there is one relatively well shot and choreographed fight scene between Batman and a room full of thugs, so that's something I guess. Otherwise, as far as the climactic set piece goes, which gets spearheaded by Luther creating Doomsday to go smash the place up, the end battle is a dull, CGI filled, ugly looking mess. And it seems like a weird contradiction on Luther's part because you would have thought that creating a monster is just a reason for Superman and Batman to team up, but okay, whatever. Oh and by the way everyone, Wonder Woman's here, just go with it. So yeah, that's our story. Tiring, worthless discussions for far too long, until the movie finally contrives the three heroes into the same space to battle a bland personality free CGI monster which should feel like years worth of build up finally paying off. Superman, Batman and Wonder Woman sharing screen time? This should be an instant iconic movie moment, but because we don't really know anything about these characters, it just feels like a cheap imitation of the Trinity coming together. The Smallville version of the Justice League felt more real than this does. And if the goal here was to prove to me why the League needs Batman, a guy with no superpowers but lots of intelligence and gadgets fighting otherworldly monsters like Doomsday, they spectacularly failed. When Doomsday finally sets his sights on Batman, and Batman literally just runs away, I instantly burst out laughing. Invaluable member of the Trinity right there folks. And eventually it concludes in Superman using Batman's kryptonite spear to kill Doomsday, and by extension himself, sacrificing his own life for the city, because of course he does. Provoking Batman and Wonder Woman to then set up the Justice League, but Superman might be back next time. And yet, at the end of the day, I can't help but feel as if there's the chance of a more important issue getting lost in the discussion. This isn't bad because of technicalities that don't entirely work, or plot holes, or anything like that, though they certainly don't help. This is bad because it's been made by people that don't actually like Batman, Superman, or really any of the DC characters. And they've taken this opportunity not to tell a story or to reinterpret the material in a new insightful way whilst keeping true to the underlying themes of what each property has always been about, much like how Richard Donner or Christopher Nolan approached their respective individual incarnations of the title characters, but to bend them over backwards to offer their darker, grittier, and more unpleasant alternatives for the sake of being darker, grittier, and more unpleasant under this false pretense of supposedly making the material more mature and complex. I'm sorry, but no. Your film is not an intelligent think piece and your characters are poorly realised. 
and no amount of ponderous lofty dialogues, pandering comic book references, or brutal underlit nighttime fight sequences can magically make your childish, insulting, depth-deprived movie meaningful, reverent, or cool. It just doesn't work that way. And the sooner you guys realise that, the sooner your films might actually change for the better. Cold, bleak, nonsensical and joyless, apart from when it gets so silly you can't help but laugh, Dawn of Justice is the worst movie I've seen in a very long time and, funnily enough, I do not recommend it. Cheers for watching guys, and as always if you like this video, you can subscribe to my channel.